Hey guys, welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Chelsea from Our Urban Homestead. Uh, meatloaf is for dinner and I don't have, my jar of breadcrumbs is empty. So I pulled out a bag from the freezer. What I do anytime I have leftover bread, like little bits of bread or crackers, I throw them in one of these, kind of smash them up a bit and then put them in the, seal them, put them in the freezer. And then I use my food processor for when I need them. I haven't bought breadcrumbs in probably close to six years. And it's another way to not have waste. So we love that. I'm gonna throw these in and then just give them a quick little pulse. I have to plug it in. I had my vacuum plugged in. I just uh, accidentally knocked one of my plants off and it broke the pot and I had soil everywhere. So I had to vacuum that up real quick. All right, back to the pulsing. And that's that. Now, if you want to do like Italian breadcrumbs, you could easily just throw some Italian seasoning in here when you go to pulse it up. I do them plain, that way they are more versatile. And if I want them to have Italian seasoning, I will just add it in when I go to make the dish, like uh, when I do meatballs for spaghetti. I will add Italian breadcrumbs into this or Italian seasoning into the breadcrumbs. And there we go. I'm stocked back up on my breadcrumbs for the next little while. All right. And then I'm going to be right back. I'll show you the peppers and onions that I had rehydrating earlier. I'll show you what those look like and how I prepare those. So stay tuned. Okay, so I've got my peppers and onions drained that I showed you in my cake video earlier. Um, they, these were dehydrated. All I did was pour some water on them. It's been probably, I don't know, two hours and they're back to being bell peppers. I'm just gonna throw these in here. I like to um, give these just like a little rough chop along with my onions. So those are going to go in. And we're just going to give this a quick pulse just to kind of chop them up a bit. A beautiful thing right there oh it smells so good I could probably just eat this alone it smells so good so this is gonna go into my meatloaf mixture I will take my rings off get all of my stuff and be right back to show you how I make my meatloaf all right I'm gonna start first with the sauce that I put on top of my meatloaf um, I have a pint of ketchup that I made. I believe I have a video on this channel. If not, you can check out my Facebook page at Our Urban Homestead. Um, I make ketchup with, like at the end of the season, if I still have a lot of green tomatoes left that aren't going to ripen before we get our frost, I pick them all and I make ketchup out of my green tomatoes. So if I don't have the video on this channel, hop on over to my Facebook page and I know for sure that it's there. So I have a pint of ketchup and I'm telling you, once you make ketchup, you're never going to want to buy it again, especially if you grow a lot of tomatoes. And I, 
I love growing tomatoes. I know I say it every freaking video, but I do. And then this is some of my barbecue sauce that I make. I'm just going to put a little bit in there. And some brown sugar. I'm probably going to use the rest of this jar. And then in my pantry, I already have jars already made. So all I have to do is grab another one and put it into my cupboard. Makes it much easier if you do big batches ahead of time. Yes, it's time consuming, but in the long run, it's not because you just have to grab a jar and put it back on your shelf. Okay, so this is the sauce that I put on top of my meatloaf. Sometimes I add a, a little squeeze of mustard or mustard powder, but this is typically the, just this sauce goes on it. It's so good. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside, gather the rest of my ingredients for the meatloaf, and we'll be back in just a second. Okay, so for the next step, I have about two pounds of ground beef here in this bowl. Got one egg with just a splash of milk and about a quarter cup of ketchup. I'm gonna add the ketchup in with the egg and milk. And then I'm gonna put the seasonings in here and whisk it up and then put it into the meat. You're gonna get a really tough meatloaf if you overwork it too much. So that's why I like to put all of my spices and stuff into this mixture, then combine it in here and mix it so it's not tough. I've got some paprika. I'm gonna do probably about half a tablespoon of that some seasoned salt. I'll do about three quarters of a tablespoon of that. Tablespoon of onion powder. Tablespoon of garlic powder. Half a tablespoon of black pepper. Some oregano. I grow regular oregano and spicy oregano. I just put it all into one jar it's delicious, this little mixes. So we're gonna do about, I don't know, maybe quarter tablespoon of that. And then some French onion mix. I will do a video on this when this is done. I'm not gonna make it um, right now because I obviously have enough. And I'm gonna do two tablespoons of that. Then we'll give this mixture a whisk to combine all of the spices. And it turns into this delicious little mixture. We are gonna add that to our meat. I like to add cheese to my meatloaf as well. Um, first I'm going to add the peppers and onions that we processed. or so of our homemade breadcrumbs. I 
I like to add cheese. Um, I had some mozzarella in the fridge that I wanted to get used up and um, some Colby Jack cheese. So I've got this all shredded and ready to go. We're gonna add, we're gonna start with, you know what, to hell with it. We're just gonna add the whole bowl. <laughs> and then we're gonna uh, mix this up. This is not my most favorite part of the meatloaf making, but sometimes you gotta get your hands in there. Work that meat. And I really feel like adding the spices to that egg, milk, and ketchup mixture just allows for a more even seasoning of your meat. Because if you're like sprinkling it on top, you know, it's not going to be worked in there as well as like mixing it. You're going to over mix your meat and that's not going to be good. All right, so that is all I'm doing for the meat mixing. I already have a pan over here. I'm just going to dump this in, shape it into a loaf. My oven's at 350 and this is going to cook for about 45 minutes or until the meat is done. 15 minutes before, I'm going to pour that topping that I showed you earlier on top of it and uh, let that bake for the last 15 minutes. My hands are gross. I have to wash them before I stop the camera. Sorry. And this is one of the best meatloaf recipes you will ever eat, I promise you. It is so good. My son doesn't live here anymore, so I'm hoping that tomorrow I can have a meatloaf sandwich because that is one of my most favorite, favorite things um, to do with leftover meatloaf. Oh, so good. So, so good. Okay, so I hope you try this recipe. I'll post a picture um, after it comes out so you guys can see what it looks like. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. If you know someone who would enjoy my videos or like to learn something from me, please recommend my channel to them and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.